Kevin, and I'm uh, happy everybody's here, and I hope you enjoy the uh, displays downstairs. Today, I'm just going to relax and look back, look at some plants that uh, can grow in your yard. Uh, now, this one is an interesting uh, start, I suppose, in that this is nobody's yard. This is Coyote Ridge, just west of Highway 101 in Santa Clara County. It's a, a gem in Santa Clara County. And a uh, few people know about it. It's not open to the public yet, but uh, we do lead trips there about once, once a year or so, around, around this time of year. And it's to be seen because there's a, not only are there <coughs> stunning wildflowers, but it's also the, the main population of Bay Cheddar Spot Butterfly. It's, that's where they live now. They used to live everywhere, but uh, they only survive on this specialty soils. This is called serpentine soil. They survive here because uh, weeds really can't get in too well. It's a, it's a toxic soil. The natives are all adapted to it, whereas uh, weeds kind of aren't as much. So anyway, that's, that's sort of a side note. It doesn't have too much to do with gardening. Uh, but my point with this picture is there are elements of this you can pull into your garden. Uh, a lovely plant like tidy ticks, for example, uh, that, that's very easy to grow anywhere in the valley here. Um, there's a native dandelion here. Actually belongs here. You could have a native dandelion in your, in your lawn, as it were, and it would belong there. It would be uh, something you could rejoice over. Uh, they're, they're really pretty. Uh, gold fields is the other little flower there. Uh, these are not hard things to have if you are willing to work a little bit at it. Now, whether or not you'll get bait checker spot butterflies, I don't know. Probably not, but the, one can dream, right? <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the main focus of today's talks will be today's talk will be plants from the South Bay. I, I call it Bay Area plants, but I, you know we're all here from the South Bay for the most part, and that's where I'm going to focus from here to here. I'll, I'll pull a full pl few plants in uh, from other areas, and I'll tell you about those. But the point of this talk really is there's so many plants in this area that are good for gardening, it's, it's stunning. And the reason for that is we're right in the middle. We've got elements of Southern California and we've got elements of, of the North, of the Great Northwest. And they meet right here. And so we've got all sorts of choices for gardening. Um, you know, from the San Mateo coast, you have this lovely scene. This is right on the Ocean Bluffs near Half Moon Bay. Uh, the Santa Cruz Mountains have mixed evergreen forests and of course, really nice redwood forests. They also have chaparral, so this, that's the Southern California element. Uh, you have the northern is the, is the mixed evergreen forest and, and redwood forest. But then Southern California is full of chaparral. We've got both uh, oak, oak woodland, uh, oak foothills. This is actually a park in the city of San Jose. This is Guadalupe, Guadalupe Oaks Park in San Jose. Really neat place if you ever have a chance to go there. Oh, yeah. It's a little island, and uh, it's, it's really neat. Uh, just to see these things surviving right in the middle of the city. You can see the city all around you. And then we also include places like Mount Hamilton, where this lovely little flower grows. This is uh, called Claytonia gypsophiloides. It doesn't really have a good common name, but it's downstairs. Uh, it's a uh, gypsum-loving Claytonia, I guess. <laughs> but what a beautiful sight that is uh, to see. And it really has nice fragrance, too, these tiny little flowers. And then how about Blazing Star? That grows on the other side of Mount Hamilton and is gorgeous. It actually grows here in the Santa Cruz Mountains as well. So these are all things you can bring into your yard without too much difficulty. Let me uh, pause real quick. When I say bring into your yard, I'm not encouraging people to go out and collect in the wild. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not legal. Uh, unless you know somebody with private property and says, go ahead, go, go ahead and collect it. Uh, you can't collect at parks. So I just want to put that out there. But a lot of, most of what I've, uh, I'm showing you today is available in the nursery trade. That's why I'm showing it to you. There's so many other plants that I didn't show you. <laughs> and there's probably common plants that I didn't show you too. There's just so many things to choose from. And us with only an hour. So, uh, yeah. What are the best of the nurseries that handle the So here in, uh, in San, San Jose, uh, there's uh, Payless Nursery on the east side that's really, that has a good uh, native selection. Um, some of the... Uh, so, so Almond and Valley Nursery has a good selection. Yamagami does. Uh, there's a, a native nursery in Aptos um, called Native Revival. Really nice. There's another one in Santa Cruz, Central Coast Wilds. So they're around. Steve, you have a suggestion? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Capital Wholesale. They do a oh, great right. job. Yeah, of, they're doing a lot of uh, natives now. And they, that's they, a they, have a, they have a lot of natives, and they will special order anything for right. you. Right. And you just wander in there and look around. It's not, it's not fancy. 
but it's got it's really nice. Capital. This is on uh, Southwest Expressway. Sort uh, by Southwest, not on it. Oh, it's not. No, no. Capital is by Capital Expressway. Oh, okay. East Side San. Oh, I'm thinking of different one. Then. Yeah, they're they're, they're, they're central. central. Oh, central. 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 But they're they, they won't special order, and they don't have that much. Okay. Capital wholesale. The, the, the whole nursery is in a, a PG&E right-of-way underneath uh -huh. these big <clears throat> high-tension uh, high uh, wires. High wires. They, they, they couldn't put anything else there, so they put plants. And, uh, but they'll hold... They'll, Take uh, home, your plants kind of grow, you know, glow a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, that, that, <laughs> they attract moths because they glow at sure, night, sure. right? No, that's, that's, that's good. You know, there, there really haven't been a whole lot of nurseries here. There's... There's always been Yerba Buena Nursery, which is far away. Now they're in Half Moon Bay, which is still kind of far away for a lot of us. Lovely place to go. You know, there's a lot of other places to visit over there. Yeah. There's the summer, winds in, the summer winds in Palo Alto have somebody who's noticing a lot of things. I've been noticing a lot of summer winds have, have yeah, made it to and even a few at Home Depot. So you, know, you never know. I think mm -hmm. you're going to see more and more uh, native sections. Of course, the best place to buy your native plants is the Native Plant Society. Next and there week. happens to be a sale next week. So that's my plug for them, <laughs> for us. CMPS next Saturday. CMPS, and, and that's where it's held. This is Hidden Villa. Uh, you know, none of us really have this in our backyards unless we're really lucky, but we can borrow some scenery from this kind of a situation. Do you have to pay for the parking when you go? No, the not for the plants. And, you know, it's, it's free parking. Everything's free except for the plants. It wasn't last year. No, it's free parking, babe. You just tell them you're there for the plants. Except for the park and the right spot. Yep. So this is a, a nice uh, native morning glory that is easy to grow. And in fact, it's so easy to grow, be careful. <laughs> it might be one of these things you go, oh, please establish, please establish, and then you find yourself ripping it out because it's established so well. Uh, but a lot of us, if you have room for a plant like this to climb along a fence or something, by all, by all means, it's one to do it. Uh, this is a scene from Edgewood. Again, not something you know we have in our yards necessarily, but but a simple little uh, arrangement here of a, a common lotus and our soap plant in blue. And uh, this is a you know these kind of scenes are all over the valley, all around the valley, and they used to be in the valley, and then we came. Uh, but you know this is can't get too much closer to the valley than that. This is black sage growing overlooking uh, the Almaden Valley, and this is a plant that. You know, the reason that I'm, I'm saying to use natives is it's, it's a no-brainer because they're easy. <laughs> they're just, you know, if it's, if they, they really don't require a whole lot of suffering. They don't require pesticides. You want some of the insects to come in, but it, it, most of, of the bad insects will leave these guys alone. Uh, you'll get beneficial insects, but you won't get the things that hurt a lot of other plants because these belong here. They've evolved with what's flying around here. And, uh, and, they, and so it, it's... it's a no-brainer to me in that they're really easy. There are other benefits as well, like bringing in good wildlife, but uh, just the fact that they grow so easily without having to suffer over them like the things from Europe do, parts of Europe. So I'm gonna, basically the rest of the time we're going to look at uh, various plants. And I'm going to start with trees, and I'm starting with one of the bigger trees we have. This is valley oak, and this is the one that should be here. This is the one that suffered the most by us moving in. It likes valleys, we like valleys. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of these left. Um, they are tremendous plants. A lot of people think that oaks grow very slowly. This one will grow fast. You can water this oak. A lot of oaks you say, oh, you can't water it, it'll die. This one grows in water. At, at Lexington Reservoir, when it floods, this one will be surrounded by water. And it's still growing just fine. So that's how much water it can take. It can be underwater. So, and, and when you water something like that, it'll grow really fast. It is the largest oak in the world. A lot of people don't know that. It's the, it's the, uh, the biggest oak in the world. It has that classic oak shape. Uh, the, the, one of the reasons I really like this plant is it's deciduous. This is a deciduous oak. Like, I'm, I'm from back east where they're all deciduous. And I came here and said, what's this thing that's evergreen all year? It can't be an oak, clearly. Uh, but we do have ever, evergreen oaks, too. The deciduous oaks are really good at putting down litter that is very usable as mulch. The uh, evergreen oaks, it's a little bit tougher to, to have that stuff break down, those evergreen, leaf, evergreen leaves. But these leaves break down really well. Also, an advantage to, to a, so a lot of us have trees already, but if you're thinking of establishing a tree, I highly encourage this one. Uh, I like deciduous trees because they let the sun in when you want it in the winter, and they block it out in the summer when you don't want it. So it's, it's a really good uh, green building 
uh, technique is to use a deciduous tree, and there's no finer deciduous tree, in my, in my opinion, than uh, the value. We're uh, familiar with Coast Live Oak as well, and I'm sure that's what it looks like at your house. <laughs> uh, it, they're, they're really neat, um, and they're really beautiful, and they grow very willingly around here. You know, I, I, I have a problem in that they, they don't break down as easily, and they, they don't allow a whole lot of light through, so it's pretty dense shade underneath one of these. Um, so you can go ahead and plant one, you'll get plenty. Basically, my, my, my uh, saying is plant an oak, plant a habitat, because the things that move in when you have an oak tree, I, that's a whole other program. I literally have another program on that, and it would take an hour to tell you all the things that benefit from oaks. Uh, but suffice to say, if you want to bring uh, some wildlife into your yard, have an oak tree. Uh, a tree that's not uh, used too much in horticulture, but probably should be more, is gray pine. It's a really pretty plant. Um, maybe why it's not used is it has really huge cones. It might hurt if, it, if they fall, because uh, they're kind of spiky and huge. They're like this. So, uh, and you can see them downstairs. But otherwise, a perfectly wonderful tree. Just don't put it in places where people walk. Um, this one maybe doesn't look like something you know, but I'm sure you do. It looks almost like a rhododendron or something, and it's really fragrant and beautiful, and it's laurel. It's, it's our California bay tree. And look at the, the really pretty flowers on this thing that often are overlooked. These bloom in, in winter, late winter. And they're just really beautiful. Another easy tree to grow here in the valley that will grow really fast. You probably don't want to grow it next to an oak um, because it's so dope. There's a chance this, this species is a, uh, a, a carrier for sudden oak death. It doesn't die from it, but it, it can carry it. So if you have oak trees nearby, don't plant a bay alone. But otherwise, a very nice tree. Uh, this is another lovely uh, deciduous tree. It's deciduous in a different way, though. It's summer deciduous. This is our California buckeye. And uh, they're, they are really something. I mean, some people get uh, summer, loses his leaves in the summer. That's no good. Eh, it's kind of cool. It's different. It's very California. We don't have any rain here in, in summer. Shouldn't you be losing your leaves to save energy? Well, this, this, this tree figured it out, and it's what it does. Uh, it has a great uh, blossom, very fragrant, very attractive to butterflies. Uh, and that happens right around now, uh, May into June, and it's tremendous uh, bloom. And I really like the fruit, too. <coughs> Shiny. Uh, when I first moved here, I thought, oh, that looks edible. It's, not, it's toxic, actually. <laughs> um, but apparently Native Americans did use them in times of trouble. Uh, they, you can leach out the toxins, uh, just like you do with acorns. And it's a lot of meat in that one seed, that's for sure. But beautiful plants, and, and when they are some, some are deciduous, this is what's left on the tree. So you have a tree that looks kind of like it's dead, except it has these ornaments on it. So it's kind of neat. So that's, that's California buckeye. Ah, this is a, uh, a, another habitat plant, really, a really beautiful one, easy to grow, very quick growing, uh, once established. This is our, our blue elderberry, which gives in many ways, it gives nice flowers, very fragrant, gives fruit, it is delicious, and it's edible for humans. The blue elderberry is, is edible, red, el red elderberry, which I'm not showing you, is toxic, so don't eat the red. That's you know, kind of universal, isn't it? Uh, but great plant for birds and for people, because we like the taste too. Uh, speaking of things that can, you can eat, how about Hollywood cherry? Eh, maybe not something we want to eat, but look at the beautiful flowers, very fragrant, again, um, very easy to grow. A little bit slow growing. Uh, you can give this one supplemental water. I, I always thought it was really slow growing, and I had one uh, adjacent to my area that I water. It's not right in it, but it got a little bit of water, and it grew. Uh, taller than me in two years. So that's not slow growing at all. <laughs> that's pretty fast. And uh, I think that, that could happen if you uh, give it some kind of water. And they have lovely fruits too that are edible by people, but we don't usually bother because they're this, it's a very small amount of pulp and a large amount of seeds. Who really likes them are birds. Uh, Band-tailed pigeons and robins and a lot of different things uh, depend on this fruit. So this is a, a mosaic. You can see sort of some red in there. Uh, this is a, a plant that can go both in chaparral and woodland. And it's uh, our state shrub, in fact. And it's toyin. Uh, that is our official state shrub. It grows almost everywhere. This is the, 
the plant that gave Hollywood its name. This is Hollywood, as it were. This is the Santa Clara Valley, but a uh, great plant for birds, again. And this one will self sow after a while. You get one of these established, and it starts making fruit like this, and suddenly you've got toyans coming up. How about that? Is that uh, uh, not by us. Um, I mean, again, that might be something that if you're a Native American and everything else failed, you might be able to make food out of that somehow. But, you know, it takes a lot of work, I'm sure. So, but, but who does like this is uh, cedar waxwings. They really go for it. They love that. So they'll, they'll descend on one of these and, and denude it pretty quickly. Um, but it's, again, it's a very easy uh, shrub slash tree to grow. So we're sort of working uh, from our way down from the big trees down to shrubs. Oh, that's the flower on it. It's in the rose family. That's a little tiny rose. So there's a shrub that's, uh, I should, it's, tiny is not something you usually call this one. Uh, this is <laughs> Fremontodendron. And if you have a large space to fill and you want something glorious to fill it with, uh, go with this. This, uh, this takes very little moisture, no, su no supplemental water in the summer, really. And uh, they come in various sizes. The ones that are usually called